Origami is the Japanese art of paper folding. For the origamist, they know what the end game will look like. But the paper, of course, has no knowledge of it. And then as you're doing the easy things that build to the harder and harder and harder steps, you know, the payoff happens. My name is Manu Platt. I'm an associate professor here at Georgia Tech and Emory University's Department of Biomedical Engineering. My research covers maybe three different areas. Um, we have a cardiovascular focus where we really care about hemodynamics, how blood flow influences disease, and we take that really into studying why children with sickle cell get strokes. Another area of my work is HIV-related cardiovascular disease that's also related in those same ways. Then we do a lot of computational biology and predictive medicine where we look at how we can use biomarkers and math to kind of predict the future for a patient's health care outcomes, particularly in the field of breast cancer. A typical day, and usually there's some grant writing that needs to be done, there's some journal articles to be reviewed, so I do my best thinking first thing in the morning. Mondays are my favorite days because that's when it's research submerged all day long. Um, then we have our big lab meeting that day where two people present. I do teach an undergraduate class. Georgia Tech is a great undergraduate institution. My lecture class has about anywhere between 60 to 80 students in it. I go in, I teach my class, interact with the students after class or before class and then come on back and talk to my lab people. I was really excited to be chosen for a Keystone Symposia Fellow. It was interesting at the beginning, I mean, there were Nobel laureates in the room. <laughs> and that the chair of the Scientific Advisory Board was from Karolinska, and she had been named to be the lead on the who would select the next Nobel laureate. What? Right? Daunting, okay? The idea that we would be working with the Scientific Advisory Board of the Keystone uh, Symposia to develop scientific meetings for, the, for three years in the future was, how do we do this and how does this work? And I love that it was a backdoor view into how even science policy gets set where these leaders in, in the scientific community come together and say, where do we think we can drive discussion? And then I met my mentor from that, um, Frank Slack, who was at Yale at the time, and I mean, an amazing researcher. And what was great about him is he actually took it very seriously. He invited me to Yale to give a seminar. I think at the time I was a second or third year assistant professor down here in an engineering department at Georgia Tech invited to Yale to give a seminar on their molecular, cellular, and developmental biology. And I have to say, to have that on my CV, probably early on, helped with my third year critical review, that then helped everything else, and then the connections I made while I was there. I think I was a Keystone Fellow maybe six, seven years ago. But even since then, remaining in touch with the Keystone Fellows, and then to see that network grow and build is um, pretty fantastic. The thing about mentorship, it's one of those buzzwords that I used to, I used to hate it as a buzzword, I'll be honest. Um, when I first started my professional life, when I'd go to meetings, I'm like, the importance of mentoring, mentoring, mentoring. Because it means so many, it can mean so many different things and reflect in different ways. And, you know, and sometimes people say, oh, I'm looking for a mentor, but it, with no guidance of what that might mean, right? So even before the word was defined to me as mentor, I have to say, I, I think of it as I've met these wonderful people throughout my life who have opened up opportunities for me. And they make these opportunities. I think the important thing there is that if you don't know what's out there, then you, you can only pursue things that you can envision, right? And so for someone to come along and open a door for something that I was like, oh, I didn't know there's a door there, that's what I think a good mentor does and then helps you walk through the door and be successful when walking through. Because what you learn about an origami is when you make, a, sometimes you just make a crease and then open it back up just so you have a place to go later. Um, which is just interesting thinking about how that you make a fold to guide you in a future step, right? So again, I think about all the pieces that people have put into place for me just to help me get to this final product. And sometimes you make all of these creases that at the time have no payoff because you still got the same flat piece of paper and you may not see what's gonna happen until later and then all of those creases were important when you have to do this one like magnificent difficult fold that then you get the the point of, oh, that's why I was doing all this other stuff. For the origamist, <laughs> they know what the end game will look like, but the paper, of course, you know, papers don't think, has no knowledge of it. But then continuing to try it again and again, and then finally, 
getting this beautiful butterfly. At that moment of satisfaction, uh, we have refined our skills and we've been taking these steps over and over and over again and finally we do it. Best feeling ever. Best feeling ever.